after hearing Bhagavad Gita yesterday we heard that if one surrenders to Krishna, he can cross over this Maya, otherwise not. And there are four types of persons who will not surrender. And there were three different interpretations of these four types. Uh, worldly minded, who are uh, uh, hedonistic or uh, altruistic by nature, who are wireless leading dissolute lives and are therefore the worst among mankind, then impersonalists and those who are demoniac, they are against Krishna. They do not submit to Krishna because of lack of Sukriti. Every jiva is by nature eternal servant of Krishna. When misuses her relative independence, then she comes into Maya and gets full ego. Then according to her activities, she will be in this situation or another. But that will never change. We are all eternal servants of Krishna. So when some jiva will gather enough Sukriti, knowingly or unknowingly, will do some service to Krishna or his devotees, then he can also become inclined to the service of Krishna. Even demons, even in personalists, everyone and everyone, because it is the nature of Jiva, but it takes some time to come to that platform. After we get fulfillment because we wanted to enjoy, so Krishna gave us, okay, you enjoy and see, then I'm giving you chance to decide again. So first we have to enjoy to experience, then we can get out. Otherwise, we will still think, no, but better like this. Because Maya is dazzling, looks like it is happiness, but it is not. So unless you then experience, still that illusion may persist. But once you experience, there is no water there. It is phantasmagoria. I cannot quench my thirst with that. Then one will willingly and firmly give up. Otherwise it will be unstable. Then Chaturbhidhava Jante Mam Jana Sukriti Norjuna Arto Jigyasur Artharti Gyanecha Bharatarshabha. O Arjuna, O Bharatarshabha, four classes of righteous people who observe Shastric rules of regulated life are eligible to worship me. They are, one, the fruit seekers who remember me when afflicted with grief and sorrow, two, the seekers after real knowledge, three, the seekers after worldly amelioration, means improvement, and four, the seekers after salvation. Yesterday we also heard some examples that the circumstances do not automatically inspire one to submit to God. Either favorable or unfavorable circumstances, unless one has Sukriti, he will not submit. We heard that from Gurudev, he, he said, we, we were informed that tomorrow we will all die, but none of us said, let us then worship Krishna. But we wanted to enjoy that rasa gulas and these things. So it was 
very dangerous situation, but it was not. And that old lady, she was, she knew she will die. Uh, critical, but still, even requested three times by different persons, she would not utter Krishna now. So the circumstances does not inspire one. Only Sukriti and Sadhu Sangha that will inspire. Explanation. The vilest people seldom worship me. Seldom means rarely or not. Very rare. They are not at all inclined to make any spiritual progress. Some of them have perchance taken a religious turn of mind. Four classes of righteous people who observe Shastric rules of regulated life are eligible to worship me. One, they are the fruit seekers who remember me when they are afflicted with grief and sorrow. They are known as artas or distressed. The wildest people sometimes remember me when they are also afflicted. Artas means distressed. Example, we have Gajendra. He took shelter. And during Kartik, we are hearing about that pilot Nixon. He was hit on, in, on the plane. Plane was going down in flames. At that time, he submitted his prayer. And that lady attacked by rickshaw, she, that person wanted to kill her, so she started chanting, Ha Krish, Ha Govinda, Ha Govinda, because of Sukriti, but not all will do that, only those who have Sukriti. When in grief and sorrow, Artas, I, when I went one time uh, to India, my flight to France, Paris, was delayed, so I did not catch Paris flight to Delhi. So they then put me to go to London, and from there, by Air India, to Delhi. So that flight, Air India to Delhi, suddenly the plane start to shake like this, very heavy. And then after some time we start to fall down, like totally going down and everyone already screaming. And then after we reach some, after some time going down, as if hit as if we hit something and again like this and little up and and then again falling and all people screaming and there was one person here next to me he he said gosai 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 means like master also in india some they also call god gosai and some were chanting Jesus Christ. I was chanting Maha Mantra and some screaming. So different reactions to, to that is there. Accordingly, Gurudev also said when there was earthquake in Gualpara when he was small, that time also, they would not generally chant, but when there was earthquake, then everyone would say, Haribol, Haribol, Haribol. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, the Muslims also they were calling. So according to their particular faith and according to their Sukriti, they will uh, take shelter. I still remember the Gosai. It was Gosai, 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 Gosai. 
Indian one. So that is grief and sorrow and affliction that time you take shelter if you have security. Then to the above self deluded moralists being seekers after real knowledge feel the necessity of my existence and remember me as the object of knowledge worth acquiring. This is the second type. The seekers after real knowledge or those who are inquisitive, we generally hear. Then third type, the above Maya ridden pedants not satisfied with the idea of an ethical God know me as the supreme lord of all ethics and religions, submit to Shastric rules of regulated life, and remember me as the bestower of boon. They are known as artartis, seekers after favor, some worldly amelioration or improvement. That is example is Dhruva Maharaj. He wanted bigger kingdom than his father because he was denied affection of father. So all children, they're like that. When they are denied something, then they want that and more. And sometimes if you are denied or ridiculed because of something which you don't have, that goes deep ingrained into your subconsciousness then for whole life you will you will base your value self-worth self-worth based on having that thing or not so again and again you will try to get that thing because that is connected to your self-worth so different types there but it goes inside. Then unless you realize higher necessity means devotion to Krishna, then you will seek that all the time through different means and then losing uh, again you will seek that because that will be connected to your self worth. And lastly, when the above worshippers of abstract Brahman and of all pervading Paramatman not content with their imperfect knowledge of the same, betake themselves to the pure transcendental knowledge regarding my real name, forum, attributes, sports and realm. Real means transcendental always existing. All this is real. Krishna's Nam, Rup, Gundila, Dham, Parikar, Vaishishta. Then the veil of ignorance is then withdrawn from them and they as eternal servants take absolute shelter in me as the Supreme Lord. In fact, when the stink of desire for fruit on the part of the distressed, the stigma of defective conception of an ethical God on the part of the seekers after knowledge, the stain of transient celestial pleasures of afterlife and the slur of temporal conception regarding the eternal super excellent form and qualities of the Supreme Lord, as well as the wrong conception of impersonal Brahman, are all dissipated from the minds of the above worshippers, then it is possible for them to lead a life of pure devotion. In other words, so long as Bhakti is suliet by desires other than love of Krishna, it is adulterated or predominated by karma or jnana. 
but when it is divested, removed, of all foreign elements, such as the enjoying or renouncing mood, it becomes pure devotion. We see in Gajendra, he at first took shelter to rescue himself from death. But when he was singing the glories of Supreme Lord, as he learned in his previous life, then he gave up that desire. He said, no, I don't want to live a life of ignorance. I am not requesting for being free from death and then I will go on this materialism. No, I want freedom from this ignorance. I want actual liberation. I want your service that he was praying. But initially in Petos was because he was just about to die. And Druva also, although he went to get higher kingdom, but later on he also lost that desire after gaining superior. And uh, they are initially in Petos, but after getting more close, then they give up that those other desires and then they can lead a life of pure devotion means they will serve Krishna, worship Krishna only for his satisfaction, not to get something from him, but serving him for his satisfaction. And that is actually the highest boon one can give to oneself. Because if one gets so many things, still he will not be satisfied. Only satisfaction only comes when one is in his natural function of service to Krishna for his satisfaction. That is our real necessity, real fulfillment. So they all they realize this and they give up that. Then another interpretation of these four the strict adherents of Varna Ashram Dharma worship me as the Supreme Lord of all bliss. They are grouped into four divisions. One, some are distressed and therefore willing to get relief from their impending troubles such as poverty, disease, etc. Two, some are inquirers after the knowledge of truth. Three, some are seekers of worldly ameliorations. These three being Sakama Karmins with some desire means seekers after fruits of their actions resort to mixed devotion in which karma predominates. They will worship Krishna, but for some fruit. But still, that is better than not. There is one verse there in Bhagavatam. If one has all sorts of desires, if one has no desires, if one has desire for liberation, it will be intelligent to worship Supreme Lord because he is the giver of everything not others. So that will be sign of intelligence and gradually they can also some jiva came and uh, they are they give up gradually those impetuous desires and they come to pure devotion. So they are Sakama Karmins and Karma predominates because they want worldly improvement. And four, some are Gyanins or Sannyasins following mixed devotion in which Jnana predominates. In Shlok 12 of chapter 6, mention is made of mixed devotion in which Yoga predominates. But Kevala Bhakti or unsuliate devotion is mentioned in chapter 6, 47 verse, then chapter 7, 
here they are given, then chapter 8, 9, which verses 10, where pure devotion is described. We will come to those verses. Kevala Bhakti is pure devotion. Only devotion, no other things. The second six chapters deal with mixed and unmixed devotion. The devotion to karma, jnana and yoga is not pure devotion owing to their respective insubordination to bhakti. That is uh, covered by other desires. Like yogis, they will chant Mahamantra, but in order to get success in their yoga for health and for some mystic powers or for liberation, something. So that devotion is covered by other desires. It is not for Krishna satisfaction. The first three, this Artha, Jigyasu, Artartin, are devotees of Karma, Mishra, Bhakti. That is to say, devotion mixed with Karma. The fourth, that is to say, the Gyanins are devotees of Jnana Mishra Bhakti, attaining Shantarati as ultimate end, passive state of adoration to Krishna. There is no active seva there, but there are no other desires of this world, and they are adoring Krishna, but no seva. That is first. Uh, that devotees of such Jnana Mishra Bhakti are Sanak, Sanandan and others. You know, they were meditating on impersonal Brahman for Kumaras, but after getting so they were doing this Jnana Mishra for liberation, for that Brahman bliss, Brahmananda. But after, when they got scent of Tulsi offer to Narayan, they gave up that Brahmananda and went to serve Narayan. That was superior type of bliss. But Shukadev, Udap, and others are devotees of ardent love for Shri Krishna. When Karma Mishra Bhakti aims at knowledge after truth, it becomes Jnana Mishra Bhakti with Shantarati as sequel. But when there is not the slightest mixture of Karma, Jnana, etc. in the devotional practice, it becomes Kevala or single-minded, unsuliate devotion fully displayed in the servanthood, friendhood, parenthood, consorthood of the servitors of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna in Braja, as mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, a glimpse of which is hinted at in this shloka. Then next verse. You know, Shukadev Goswami, he was also impersonalist at first, but when he heard Bhagavatam, from Vyasadev, then he became pure devotee of Krishna and also Udap was already there in Mathura. He's a pure devotee, but not of the same status as Braja devotees. One time Krishna told to Udap, neither Lakshmi or Shankar or Baladev Shankarshan or me are as dear to me as you are. You are pure devotee. And it is a fact. But then Udap 
had some pride. Then Krishna knew. Then he sent Udav to <laughs> Vrindavan. When Udav came there to pacify Vrajavasis with some knowledge of Krishna, that Aishwarya Gyan, he's God, he's everywhere, like this. But when he came there to Braja, when he heard the outpour of emotions of Brajavasis feeling separation from Krishna, then he felt I am nothing. What kind of devotion they have. And they were not ready to listen of any of his advices that how they should meditate on Krishna and Krishna is everywhere, Krishna is God. He told to Nandamaran, Krishna is God. Then Nandamaran, he may be God, whatever you want to say, but the, the reality is he's my son. I fed him. I told him to bring my slippers and he was crying. So when that relationship with Brajabasis they have, when Udab heard, then he was astonished. Oh, this is something superior. Then he lost that pride. And also he spoke with the gopis and Radharani. Then finally he said, Vande Nanda Braja Strinam Padarengam Abhikshnasha Yasham Harika Tod Gitam Punati Bhubanatrem He said, I worship these gopis. Vande Nanda Braja Strinam Padarengam Abhikshnasha Actually, not the gopis. I worship the dust on the lotus feet of gopis. Because by their harikata, that is of different type of harikata, it is from that relationship. There are different levels of also of harikata. And levels of chanting harinam. When Jashoda is calling Gopal, that is from that intimate, sweet, delightful relation. That is very powerful <laughs> chanting, calling. Not same as others. So then he said, because their harikata of the gopis, continuously I worship them. That harikata can purify the three worlds. He came to with the mood to teach Brajavasis, but ultimately he worship them. And Asham, that another verse is there, that I want to become a creeper here in Brindavan or grass or something. Just that I can get the dust of gopis on my head, then I will think my life is successful. I heard from Srila Bharati Maharaj that we are always hearing Labdvas durlavam midam bahu sambavante manusham artadam. Human life is best of all, superior to all, and very rare and very valuable, and we always hear here human. But how is it that here Udav is praying to be grass? Because grass, he wants to be grass in Brindavan so that he can get the dust of the feet of gopis. That type of grass. So this is Braja. That is different. That is very powerful. You, not all can digest that type of prima. We are not fully surrendered to Krishna, those six-fold charanagati. Not unconditionally surrendered. By full surrender, you will come to Shantarati. But then there is Dasya of Bhaikunta. That is very powerful, this Sanak, and they, they got that means they, they left Shantarati and they went to serve Narayan and Ayodhya and all. But Braja is such a Ranagati that no one can imagine what kind of Sharanagati is that. 
So it is not so easy to digest and to understand that. No one can understand. By hearing Lila outwardly, you will think like a human something they are doing, lustful affairs and like this. But that is all total misconception. You cannot understand unless you are yourself fully surrendered for the service of Krishna and getting the grace of Brajavasi. When you become eligible for that, by the grace of that Brajavasi, then that will come, that idea that no, Krishna is not God. Krishna is my beloved. That relationship will come. Then you can understand what is the Lila of Brindavan. Before that, you will imagine something else. Tesham jnani nitya jukta eka bhaktir vishishyate priyohi jnani notyartham aham sacha mama priyaha Among them, the jnanins, when they giving up all their desires for salvation, become steadfastly attached to me, and worship me with single-minded devotion, stand superior to the other three kinds of devotees. Hence, I am very dear to the jnani, and he is dear to me. Because already he has no any non-eternal desires, he had desire for liberation. That is already transcendental, but when he will become attached, then Easily he can become. We hear there in Jeva Dharma that Mayavadi, he was staying in Kashi, Baranasi, and he was Sanyasi, and already he was repeating all Tattvama, Soham, everything he was repeating, and he had control over his senses and mind. He was already on that transcendental platform, but he felt no satisfaction fully. But at that time he could not realize. Only when some Vaishnava, Rasik Vaishnava, one who tastes Rasa with Krishna, he was going there on the streets of Baranasi and he was chanting, Ha! Nittananda Ha Gaurango, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nittananda. He was chanting and crying and sometimes falling to the ground, all ecstatic symptoms. Then just by seeing and hearing that Vaishnava was passing by, that Mayavadi felt something different in his heart. So, some type of bliss which he never experienced before. And he was very attracted to that Vaishnava and felt that thing. Then there was compari comparison was there, what he had before and what he experienced now. It was inexplicable and unprecedented. But he said, because I was thinking I'm, the, oh, I'm already sup superior to all Mayavadis, they think like that. We are after liberation, that is, we don't follow any religion, all this thing, that is low class. <laughs> but, uh, so, because of that false ego, I did not go after that Vaishnava. Although I was attracted, but that false ego was stopping me. I am sannyasi, I am knowing Vedanta Sutra, and I am, I reached up to this platform, I am supreme, I am superior to all. So that stopped him. But after some days he was, he could no longer hold himself back. It, it didn't give him peace. Then he said to hell with my this sannyas and all these things. I want that thing. 
what I experienced for a moment and that I, I want that. What is that I have to I have to get so I can get it from Vaishnav. So he was searching for that Vaishnav, but he could not find him. Then he went to Brindavan and there they were experiencing separation grief from Krishna and devotees, Rup Sanatan, where are you? They were experience then from there he came to know about Navadip. Then he went to Navadip and there he met. I think his name was Premdas Babaji. He was having all that rasa. Then he asked him and Premdas Babaji explained to him and he gave him that taste. Then that Maya, who was in Maya Valley before, he became very staunch devotee and was very learned because already from before he knew Shastra. Now only he got the real meaning. So he was very strong. So those who are already liberated, from all worldly things, then they will quickly get attachment to Krishna by coming in contact with Rasika. Must be Rasika, not some theoretical or some beginner devotee. That will not work. Must be one who is tasting Rasa. Then they will feel that is superior. And of course, Sukriti must be there. But they will very quickly, because they have no any anarthas of this world anymore. Just they need that relation with Krishna and very quickly they will uh, become strong devotees. That is why Krishna here says they are the best jnanis. Already they gave up those non-eternal desires. Explanation when arthas, jigyasus, artartins and gyanins are stainless in their desires for fruits, these four, they turn themselves as my pure devotees. Among them, the gyanins, when they give up all other desires for moksha or salvation and become my true devotees, stand superior to the other three kinds of devotees. Having no other desire than exclusive service to me, the Supreme Lord, the Gyanins can realize my transcendental beautiful form and attributes more clearly than the Karmins or the Yogins by the cultivation of pure intelligence and association with my pure devotees. That sannyasi from Varanasi when he came to Navadip and he was hearing from that Prendas Babaji Maharaj and uh, he, they were together, they were chanting Harinam. Immediately he was on Ruchi platform. From there, not Shraddha's. Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartha Nivrita, because that is already, already cleared before by that practice. So only this click to, to devote himself to Krishna and immediately Ruchi stage. Taste, transcendental taste. When one gets slight taste of the bliss of service of Krishna, then naturally, naturally and sincerely, he will say, Nadhanang na janang na sundaring kovitang bhaja vedisha kame. Mama janmani janmani shore bhavatan bhaktira hoitukite. I don't desire anything. No money, no worldly relations, no followers, no name and fame, no beautiful wife, no uh, name and fame of being a poet 
or learned scholar. Nothing. This is all belonging to this world. Also, I don't want liberation. If I have to take birth, I have no problem. In a birth in an animal or in hell or in heaven or human or insect or whatever, because I am soul. And my necessity is devotion to Krishna, so I only want this. I only want devotion to Krishna. That is the only desire I have, no any other desire, no for any worldly enjoyment or for liberation, no. And naturally he's saying this. Why? Because he got the taste of devotion, actual devotion. He got that taste. That is why he cannot pray for anything else. Impossible. That taste of devotion is not blind thing. And it is not that will reveal everything. Once you get that, automatically you will realize that these all other things are useless. They are harmful for Jiva. Automatically you re realize by that knowledge which is coming from devotion and tasting that devotion. So here Krishna is saying, they become my true devotees after giving up all those desires. Yes. And they, these Gyanins who are already liberated from Maya, they can realize my transcendental form and attributes and everything more clearly than the Karmis. Because they still have some those desires. But when they give up those desires, they also come to this platform of pure devotion. That is by the cultivation of pure intelligence. It is highest type or, or pure intelligence to do what is best for you. Best for Jiva is to serve Krishna. That is her natural function. So that is pure intelligence. I will do that. This is the best. Like that yogi, he was a yogi then got the grace of Shamananda Prabhu, then he was loudly saying, Bhakti is the best, Bhakti is the best. And to do Bhakti, that is pure intelligence, purified. And association with my pure devotees, that by the grace of pure devotees, we can get such pure intelligence. Nothing is more potent in realizing the true nature of the Jiva than the principles of Jnana Yoga. Far less are the other principles of Karma, Yoga, etc., though devoid of all stains. It is submissive association with the sadhus that enables one to realize the real function of the true self. In the incipient stage, means beginning stage, a Jnani Bhakta with single-minded devotion to me becomes a true devotee and is far superior to other devotees. Hence, he is as dear to me as I am to him. Sri Shukadev Goswami who was at first a Brahma Jnani, but in whom there was awakening of loving devotion to the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna, afterwards in the association of Shri Vyasadeva, is a veritable example of this kind of Jnani Bhakta. The service in the incipient stage rendered to the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna by the devotees endowed with pure knowledge is purely transcendental and is bereft of the slightest tinge of worldly dross.
सर्वोपादि भी निर्मुक्तम तत्परात्व न निर्मलम He is. He gave up all worldly egos, gross and subtle, and he realized that he belongs to Krishna. Then that is pure knowledge. Tat paratana nirmalam. He that that is pure, perfect knowledge. Relation. Only having him personalization that is not yet fully pure. It has no stain of Maya. But it is not complete reality. Complete truth or reality means to realize I am a small particle of consciousness, and I am a potency of Krishna. I belong to Him. I am His eternal servant. That is pure knowledge. So that is transcendental, bereft of all worldly anything. That is transcendental devotion on transcendental platform. Hrishikena, Hrishikesha Sevanam. Krishna is the master of all, of everything and all. So, when one engages in his service, that is called bhakti. If it is not for him, it is not bhakti. Someone may chant Mayavadis; they also chant Mahamantra. And the, the, but not for Krishna. That is not bhakti. Outwardly looks like bhakti, or some are chanting to get rid of some disease in India, cholera, and like this. They will chant Mahamantra. That is looks like oh, he is a great devotee, but no, that is no devotion. There was one example in Calcutta. There, where we now have mud. That old building was destroyed, removed, and then new building was constructed. Shri Bharati Maharaj was in charge, and Gurudev was also there. So, and there was an, that neighbor next. He also started to build house that, that time. At the same time, they began. But we came up to already third or like floor, but that. Came up to first floor only. Then Gurudev spoke one time with him, and then that person said, "Because I had the one contract with some architect and some firms for that cement or something, but they cheated me. So that is why my work is delayed." And Gurudev then proudly said, "But we had our at that time we had our." Sadhu architect. That is Shilam Bharati Maharaj. He's by profession, he's architect and he's a Sadhu architect. So our work was going very fast. Also, I heard from the Sevak of Shilam Bharati Maharaj, Sridhar Prabhu, our god brother. He heard from one devotee in Chandigarh when they were building the Chandigarh mat. All other devotees, they were outside something. Somewhere, and only Shri Bharati Maharaj and this devotee were there in the mud, and they were speaking Hari Kata and also supervising the workers and like this. And he said somehow I don't know how it happened, but in one night that Nath Mandir, that first floor or something, was already done very quickly. By the grace of Krishna, because Bharati Maharaj was there to to look after, so somehow by miracle it happened that very quickly they they could do, and they were speaking Hari Kata among themselves whole night while workers were do, working, and they also helped something there. So Gurudev said, "Sadhu architect." So then that person. He said, "I will file a case against them. Then I can continue." Then Gurudev said, "The next day, there was a very loud Mahamantra kirtan coming from that 
his house on the mic and very loud. He said we could not sleep and we thought how he became such a great devotee before we invited to come to our mat, but he never came. He said, I have no time. But now he became greater devotee than us, so loud uh, that is going on, Kirtan. Then Gurudev met him and he asked, how you became such a great devotee? We invited you many times, you never came. Like you have no time, but now you became greater devotee than us. Then that person said, because I started that file case in the court. So in order to win that court case, I engaged this one Kirtan party. He got and paid money and they are doing very loudly. So <laughs> that is not bhakti. Outwardly we may see, oh, but it is not bhakti, it's for some other purpose. But anyway, he won that case and then he also started to build. So that is not bhakti. But here the service in the incipient stage rendered to the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna by the devotees, those who are devoted to Krishna, and out with pure knowledge, I am not of this world, I am of Krishna. That is pure knowledge. When they will serve Krishna, that will be purely transcendental and is bereft of the slightest tinge of worldly dross. So tomorrow we will hear further about this. Thank you.